house. And we came to church this morning to worship God. Amen. Amen. I was thinking about how the devil puts in your mind things that happened yesterday, things that happened in the past, or what, what's going to happen when we get out of church today. And then it came to my mind about that little, I was hoping Josh was going to be here today to play a clip for me, but that Disney movie, The Lion King, where he hits him over the head with the stick, and he says, what did you do that for? And he says, Akuna Matata. And he says, what does that mean? And he said, it doesn't matter. It's in the past. Amen? How many knows that the things that are in the past, they're in the past? So don't let them bother you this morning. Just lay them aside. Let's live in the present. Let's not live in the future or in the past, but in the present, because we're here for one purpose. And it says where two or three are gathered in my name, there will he be in the midst. Amen. We're going to sing some songs today. If you don't know the words, they're on the screen, so don't give me that excuse. If you think you don't sing good, that's okay. The Bible just says make a joyful noise. Amen. We're going to Actually, I would like everyone to stand up, and we're going to read some scripture this morning before we get started. And let's give the devil a black eye this morning. Amen. Let's just worship together. Let's read this together. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Go to the next one. Next one. <laughs> I've got them listed. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. I like this verse. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Let's worship God this morning. Let's clap our hands. Let's sing. Mm -hmm. So glad morning.
I magnify your name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, I lift my hands in worship as I magnify your name. For you are great. You do Well, glory be to God. I don't know about you, but that old song right there, get over there. We're going to sing it again, y'all. Now, I'm short-winded. My wife said this a while ago, so 
we're going to do a little bit more singing probably than normal because I'm not long winded. But uh, that old song right there gets me every time, Amen. Sister Sherry. Because when you stop and think the meaning of that song, how great thou art. You can look back through generation after generation throughout the Bible and it wouldn't take you very long to see how good God's been. You can make it a little personal if you want to and look back through your life and see just how great God has been. Huh? Now y'all don't get quiet on me this morning. I know y'all's more lively than you're acting here this morning. I don't feel good, but that's okay because I come to praise the Lord. My old legs are shaking, my hands are shaking, so I'm feeling pretty good. Huh? I was a little bit nervous about this morning, brother, because I couldn't get nothing. I couldn't get a hold of nothing. But this morning when I was in prayer talking to the Lord, huh? He gave me something. So I'm not quite as nervous now, brother Justin. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You're here this morning. You're here for a reason. You didn't just show up at Yale Assembly just to say, I can, I've been to church. You came needing something. Whether you want to be honest about it or not, we go to church for a reason. Do we not? Huh? We don't just go so pastors got numbers. That's all fine and dandy. But when you get right down to it, Sister Sherry, why do we come to church? To serve him. To get help. Why do you go to the doctor? Uh -huh. Huh? Huh? To get help. Can I tell you, you're sitting in the room of one of the greatest physicians that you'll ever meet. That you'll ever know. There's no greater healing power than the name of Jesus. You can search this whole world over and you will never find another man. To walk this face of the earth. <laughs> it's done miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And he's still not done. Huh? I, I, I want y'all to sing it one more time and I'm going to fire it up. But I want you to stand up if you would. I know we're doing a lot of standing here this morning. But think about the sacrifice that God sent when he sent his only begotten son. So that we have this right to stand today and praise him. Y'all sing it with her one more time. Oh, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art. Think about it, church. Oh, how great Thou art.
Y'all pardon me this morning because I'm a little coughing and a little, little choked up, but that's all right. It's good to be here this morning. Thank y'all for coming out. It's always a good thing. If y'all don't show up, we can't have church. So glad to see everybody here. Good to see some of our visitors. Y'all will come back anytime. These doors are always open to more people, to new people. To people that's come and left, don't matter. They're still open. If you got your Bibles here this morning, we'll try to go pretty quick. I know uh, y'all's probably more worried about this evening service because I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. But guess what? We're going to have church anyway. Huh? That all right? That's tonight, though. Let's worry about this morning right now. How about that? Acts chapter 2. I'm going to be real honest with you. Sometimes I tell more than I probably should, but that's okay. I got up this morning, last night actually, it was last night, wasn't it? And I walk in there, and man, I like, what are you going to wear in the morning? Well, I don't know. I ain't wore a suit in quite a while, so whichever one fits, we're going to grab it and put it on. So, we got up last night, we got in there and started looking last night. Acts chapter 2, we're, we're going, I promise. And I put this one on. This one used to not fit me, brother. Now I can barely button it. So I told her, I said, that's it. Starting this week. Probably won't happen, but I still said it. I'm going on diet. I can't even wear the suit I wore at my wedding seven months ago. That's bad. So, anyway, that's just a little, that was free. That didn't cost y'all nothing right there. Acts chapter 2, and the Bible says, let me get over here where y'all's at. Make sure I'm in the same one. Chapter 2 and verse 1, we're going to do quite a bit of reading. We probably won't do it all at once. We're just going to kind of lay a foundation, and then we're going to jump right into it. So y'all ready? Here we go. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one cord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. Pay attention to that right there, okay? It didn't just pick and choose who it went upon. But the Bible says it set upon each of them. How many of you know that God is no respecter of persons? He's not going to bless Brother Bob more than he is you, sister. He may bless you in a different way, but your blessing is going to come out the same. And, 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 and a lot of times, we, we, as Christians, we, we get the attitude that, uh, well, he got more than me. Or she, she's, she's doing better than me. Well, maybe because you're not living right. Come on now. Y'all don't fall out with me this morning. We're going we're gonna to have church. But you want to want and under wonder why you're not getting as blessed as somebody else. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean that you ain't trying. But sometimes you, you, you understand what I'm saying is you got to earn that blessing. You got to earn that. Y'all don't, don't get quiet on me this morning now. Come on now. I'll keep on preaching anyways, but it's going to go a lot quicker if y'all help me. And I'm not getting on to you this morning. I'm just going to tell you what the Lord told me to tell you this morning. He told me to tell you he wants you to know, have the power to know how. You say, well, preacher, what does that mean? That means when you get in a storm, when you get in a battle, when you get in a trial and you don't know what you're going to do, he's given you the power to know what to do. Now, we're going to talk about that this morning. But you've got to understand something. It's not always going to be a bed of roses. It's not always going to be fun and games and, and glorious times. And, and, and uh, yeah, Honey, you better pray this morning because they're not helping me very good. But you understand what I'm saying to you this morning is it's not always fun to be a Christian. Sometimes you've got to get down and dirty and fight for what you have. That, that, that young lady sitting right over there, baby Axton that's on the way, and my other little boy, Grace, I would do anything for them. I would go through hell or high waters to protect them. Huh? But that doesn't always come easy. That doesn't always mean that it's always going to be just 
easy going. Sometimes you're going to have to fight, church, as a Christian. And what the Lord is wanting you to know this morning is uh, he's got the power for you to know how to fight when the devil attacks you. Amen. I get tickled at my wife because every once in a while she'll be like, come here, come here, come here. It, it, I'm gonna, not going to lie. It kind of freaks me out. That little sucker kicks my hand. I'm just like, hey, now, uh-uh, I don't know about that. That's a little, a little weird. But you know what he's doing? He's letting mama know I'm still here. I'm still in here. I'm, I'm, I'm still around. And sometimes that's what the devil, or not sometimes, that's what the devil will do. And I call my son the devil. Don't get, get me wrong here. But that's what the devil will do. He'll still kind of jab you every once in a while or kick at you and put stumbling blocks in front of you. Hey, I'm still here. But guess what? I got the power to overcome you, Satan. Huh? If you're a child of the king, we may sing out here in a minute. You never know what I'm going to do. Huh? If you're a child of the king, though, brother, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Huh? You ain't got nothing to worry about. He said, well, now you're confusing me. No, I didn't say you didn't have nothing to worry about. I said you could have the power to know how to overcome it. Huh? I didn't say you, you, you couldn't worry about it. Huh? I, I'm going to get in trouble again. My wife's a worrier. But I'm going to be real honest with you, brother. I've become a worrier, too, here lately. Not because of her. But it's because I got more people coming in my family now. I got more responsibilities now. When it was just me, I could care less. I do whatever I want, whenever I want. We're going somewhere, I promise. Don't, I'm not getting sidetracked here. I do whatever I want. It's just Sherry didn't have a second thing in the world to think about. I didn't care. Cost me more money? Oh, well, I'll just work harder to get it done. Now I got a wife. I got an eight-year-old boy. And I got another little boy on the way. I've got two months. Huh? It changes your life. And I know y'all looking at me like this idiot. He's a new daddy. He's just all. No, I get it. I understand. It changes your life. I understand that. I got a, I got, I got a, I got a ready family already. So I had to grow up real quick. I still make mistakes with that boy, Brother Justin. In fact, just the other day, I had an issue with him. And, and I got a little mad at him, and I shouldn't have. That next day, brother, I had the worst day of my life. So I was trying to figure out how. To make it right to him. You see, I'm man enough to admit when I mess up. Sometimes we as Christians are going to have to be man and woman enough to admit when we mess up. Right. Just because you're a Christian and just because everything's all fine and dandy doesn't mean you're going to mess up or not mess up and not have times that you feel you fail God. It's going to happen. Amen. You might as well just prepare yourselves for it because it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But what God is wanting us to know this morning in Acts chapter 2 is he says, don't worry about it. Because I'm giving you something. That can help you fix it when you do mess up. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Bet y'all wasn't expecting that, was y'all? Bet y'all wasn't expecting me to say you're going to mess up. Hey, what you see is what you get with me. Sorry. <laughs> I ain't no flamboyant speaker. I ain't no, I'm a country boy. But I'm going to tell you like it is. Amen. Huh? I'm not always right. I've been wrong a lot. Just ask my wife. But at the end of the day, when the smoke is settled, the dust is gone, you still have a job to do. You still have a calling on your life. Did you know each and every one of you have called of God? It's not just preachers, not just singers, not just missionaries, not just sound booth workers, but everyone in this building has a job to do for the Lord. Did y'all know that? You say, well, preacher, I can't speak, so you can pray, can't you? Well, preacher, I can't sing. Maybe God didn't call you to sing. Maybe he called you to be a, one of those persons that writes notes to people and sends them out. That's a calling. Huh? That is a calling. That is a job for God's kingdom. I'm going to have to hurry because y'all are looking at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about here. So. I'm going to hurry. I apologize if I'm confusing you. Yeah, I'm going to pull it all together, I promise, in the end. Peter, we're going to talk about Peter here for a little bit. What time is it? Oh, we've got plenty of time. Peter was a man that wanted to be a good Christian, but he had some struggles. He struggled a lot. It's not that he didn't mean well. It's not that he didn't have the ability to do well and do right. Peter was kind of stubborn. 
I liken him probably today to today's Christians more than anybody I ever do, ever anybody else in the Bible. Just because looking at his track record and the things that he's faced, the things that he went through, well, let me rephrase that. I'll, I'll liken him to my life. I'm probably more like Peter than anybody else in the Bible because Peter's life was like this. I don't know if you, if you read the stories or if you know much about Peter's life. Peter was on a roller coaster 95% at the time of his life. He was good when Jesus was with him. And the minute he was by himself, mm -mm, uh-oh, I ain't so strong anymore. What happened? Where, where, where'd, my, where'd my sidekick go? Where'd Jesus go? Huh? And if we ain't careful, we as Christians today will get that mentality is, I'm good when I'm on top of the mountain. I'm great. Nothing can hinder me. Nothing can stop me. But it's when it's down. Do you know God's the same, same up on the mountain as he is down in the valley? Huh? So if you're good on top of the mountain, don't worry about the valley. It's going to happen. They're going to come. I hate to be the bearer of bad news this morning, but you're going to go through valleys. You're going to go through storms. You're going to go through trials. But it's how you go through them and how you come out of them what matters. The storm is not what defines you. It's how you go through the storm and come out defines who you are. And that's what the Lord is trying to tell us this morning is, I've given you the power to come through them storms. I've given you the power to overcome the victorious. I've given you the power to overcome sickness. I've given you the ability to get through. Amen. And... And I don't think we quite understand that sometimes because we, I do it. I ain't going to lie. Like I said, I'm just gonna, I'll talk about me this morning. That way I don't make nobody mad. How about that? <laughs> when I get down, my wife can vouch for this. I get, I get cranky. It happens. I'm not going to lie. Do I not get cranky sometimes? And she ain't going to admit it, but she knows I'm right. But I get cranky. And, and, and she automatically knows. And I hate that. I hate that, which I love it, but I hate it. She's like, well, he's in a bad mood today. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Okay. You know what that is? That's called your spouse knowing you. That's the same way Jesus is. He knows us. He knows when we're going through a storm. He knows when we're facing a battle. He knows when we ain't on top, when we're on top of our game. You know, you, you see these players, you know, out there. I like sports, don't get me wrong. Man, I got one nod out of that. All right, we're on good. Okay. You see these players out there, those making millions of dollars. Don't get me wrong, y'all don't fall out. I'm not preaching on sports this morning. Just calm down. It's all right. Not preaching on anything like that. I'm just saying. I like sports. But anyways, you watch these players out there, and, and, and it never fails, sister. I've watched him. Russell Westbrook's one of the worst ones. Oh, my goodness. I just called out Russell Westbrook live on Facebook. Can we delete that? Turn that off? Sorry, buddy. Anyways, he is the world's worst about it, though. He will shoot a hundred times and make five of them. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Y'all watch basketball. Amen. Y'all <laughs> Exactly. But you know what? What does he do? He keeps on shooting. Now, I don't understand that. Because if I was that coach and you miss a 90 shots, you're benched. But you flip that over to the Christian side of things, that's pretty good odds. Because at least he's still shooting. At least he's still trying. Sometimes we as Christians want to quit. We want to give up. We want to lay it down by the wayside and say, Lord, it's too much. It's too hard. It's too big. I can't overcome that. I can't get through that. What about 1 John 4 and 4? Greater is he that is within you than he that is within this world. Huh? The devil knows that already. He already knows he's losing. Why do you think he tries to attack you harder and more and more and more? Because he knows his days are about numbered. They're about done. He's about to lose the war. He may win a battle here and there, but the war is not over, church. At the end, read the back of the book. The Bible says, in the end, we are victorious. Not because of what's, what we are, not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus Christ did over 2,000 years ago. Just like that song we sang about how great thou art. All of this is because of what he did for us. 
so that we would have the ability, the power to know how. Now, I hope I made a little bit of sense here this morning. I wasn't trying to confuse you or, or, or make anybody mad or do anything like that. But Philippians 4.13, y'all know that one? Huh? What's it say? I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. If, that, if you don't hear anything else I say today, just take that one scripture right there and go with it. I can do all things through Christ. You see, there's a big difference in, in doing it on your own and doing it with God on your side. I've tried both ways, Brother Davis. It don't work out very well doing it by myself. You, you, may, you may think, I got this, I can handle this. It's all right, I can do it. Friend, I can tell you by personal experience, you will fail without Jesus Christ guiding your life. Without him in your life, you will fail. And you say, well, preacher, that's harsh. No, that's facts. Huh? That's facts. You could go around this room right here and talk to each individual one-on-one, -on -one, Brother Bob, and they tell you the same thing. I've tried it on my own, Brother Frank, and I failed. I'm sure you've got some stories you could tell. Everybody in here has probably got a personal story. But at the end of the day, if you don't remember anything else I said this morning, remember this. God has given us the power to overcome. He's given us the power to walk out of here victorious. He's given us the power to lay it on the altar this morning and not pick it back up. That's a lot, that's a, that's a lot, of, a lot of times, that's what's wrong with Christians. Is, is we want to lay it down for the moment. And then we want to go pick it back up. Can I, be, can I be real with you for, for just a few minutes? Would that be all right? If I get a little personal and with me? You know one of the hardest things that I struggle with? And I know talking about it probably makes it harder. But I just want you to know, just because I'm a preacher don't mean I don't struggle with things. Huh? It's a little round can. I don't do it anymore. Amen. But it's a little round can. Whatever you want to call it, snuff, dip, whatever you want to call it. I struggled with that. That's my struggle. You say, oh, well, preacher, you shouldn't be telling that. You're a preacher. I don't care. I have personal issues, too, that I have to take to him daily. Huh? I'm letting you know, just because I'm a preacher don't mean anything. Don't mean that I don't struggle just like you, Sister Claire. Don't mean I don't have temptations that come in my life. I fight them just like you do. But guess what? I got the power to overcome. Huh? I got what we call the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. And when you get that power uh, to know how you're going to get over something, uh, it's a little bit easier, Brother George, uh, to fight that fight. Uh, when you're trying to overcome something by yourself, uh, you will not be able to do it. If you're addicted to drugs, you will not be able to quit them by yourself. If you're addicted to pornography, you will not overcome that by yourself. But God has given us the spirit to overcome victorious. If you're addicted, if you're an alcoholic, you will not overcome that on your own. You're going to have to hit that old time altar right down there and get a hold of Jesus Christ and lay it at his feet. Does it get any easier? Nope. Just because you lay something down and you get the victory over it, don't mean it's gone. He said, well, preacher, thanks for that. Hey, I told you a while ago, I'm just going to shoot real with you. But you have the ability, when you lay it down at the altar, to replace it with something called the Holy Ghost. That's when it becomes a little easier for you. And when I say it's not, hey, see, I knew you, I knew you knew what I was talking about. You got that thunder hoodie on back there. <laughs> yeah, buddy. But that's when, you, that's when it becomes easier, though. <laughs> When you lay something down, don't pick it back up. When you're taking that weight off, leave it there. Right. You say, well, preacher, that's easier to say than that. I know it is. I just told you what I struggle with, and I don't say that braggingly. Because I hate it. I wish I could just say I quit, 
and walked away from it, but I didn't. Because the devil knows what gets me. Just like he knows what gets you this morning. Just like what he knows brings you down, sister. But guess what? God said no. God said you can't have her this morning. I've got a job for her. I'm giving her the power to push through. I know to some of you, I may just be rambling rambling this morning, but God is in here wanting to touch somebody. He's wanting to lift somebody up this morning. I, I got this message this morning. I was flipping through. I don't know. Man, I wish that thing wasn't going live. I'm going to tell all some preachers right here, okay? Y'all just bear with me. I don't care about that no more. I don't even look at that. Sometimes we re-preach messages. Oh, but y'all didn't know that, did you? Huh? Yeah, we do. We get our little favorite sermons. I guess you won't call them soapboxes or whatever. And we get on those little kicks, Brother Justin, and that's what we stay on. Hmm? I've done that one or two or three or four. Man, I ain't going to stop. We'll stop right there. We've done it a few times. How about that? I told my wife this morning. And when I said this, I didn't mean it ugly. I love doing this. It, it's right here. If I could do this full time, I'd do it. I love it. There's no greater feeling than when that Holy Ghost falls down upon you. It ain't me no more. But when that old Holy Ghost, Brother Rick, comes into the service, yeah, that's why you see this old hand that started shaking and this old leg started going. It ain't me up here trying to get some, some kind of, oh, look at him. No. I want you to see Jesus, not me. I could care less if you see what color suit I have or what color my tie is. I don't care about that. What I care about is getting you help. What I care about is getting you closer to Jesus. Because if I don't do that, I've not done my job. Huh? If I'm just up here tickling your ears, we might as well go and watch a ball game together. Because it ain't helping you. Huh? I've tickled a few ears before with my preaching and... Uh, I got reprimanded for it. And I made God a promise. I said, God, if you'll give me a new sermon, every time I step behind that pulpit, I'll never tickle another ear. You know what? He held his end of the bargain. And I'm doing the best I can to hold up mine. Huh? But you got to understand here this morning. Come on, baby. I'm done. Get up there for it. So I quit rambling. <laughs> But you got to understand something this morning, church. Just because you struggle, just because you face a battle, don't quit. Don't quit going to church. Don't quit reaching out and calling on God because all you're doing is letting the devil win. And I've just told you two scriptures. There's more in there and I could read you more. But I've just read you two scriptures that let you know you ain't got nothing to worry about. Lay it down. And it'll be all right. Huh? Like I said, if you don't remember anything else I said this morning, remember Philippians 4.13 and 1 John 4.4. 4, because there's nothing, Brother Willard, that the devil can place in front of you that God can't move. Huh? There ain't nothing the devil can place in front of you that God can't move. We get it in our mind that he can't. But remind you of this. Go back to Calvary. He moved it all right then and there. He didn't leave nothing undone, Brother Troy. When he walked up that lonely hill, carried that old cross, stood it up on there, and let him hang. Amen. He knew what he was doing. Amen. He was taking his sins away for us. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't his sins. He didn't have any. Huh? He did that all for you and me. So that we could live victorious and live a life that was pleasing to Him. Now don't get me wrong. Like I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're backslidden this morning. I'm not saying that you're any kind of worldwide sinner. But just remember, as Christians, you still struggle. We still have times that we need to hit the altar. We still have times that we need to feel His hand upon our lives one more time. Does that mean, Brother Dustin, I'm going to hell? No. That just means you need to get some more help. 
A lot of preachers will condemn you and send you to hell because you, 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 you've messed up. Not me. Read the Bible. The Bible says no. Huh? Just because somebody messes up don't mean they're going to hell. Uh, you can fall out with me all you want. I'm sure some preachers would, but I don't preach like that. You as a Christian are going to have times you slip and fall. You're going to have times that the devil gets you down. You make a mistake. It happens. But guess what? Acts chapter 2 says, I have given you the power to overcome it. I've given you the power to repent. Y'all stand to your feet. Come on, y'all. We're done. We're done. We're wrapping up. Go ahead, babe. Go ahead. Huh? If you're here this morning and something has been said that has touched your life or there's a problem in your life that you're dealing with, I want you to come around in front of these altars. You can stand with your hands raised up or kneel however you want to do it. But there's somebody here this morning that the Lord sent this message to. And I want you to make your move. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around. But if you're here this morning and there's little things in your life that you need help with, this altar is wide open. God's calling your name this morning, church. He's not calling it to embarrass you. He's calling it to help you. You may say, well, preacher, I've had a great week. Good. Come on up here and get some more help anyways, just in case. Lord, speak to hearts this morning, Jesus. Lord, I preach to what you laid on my heart. God, I pray that you would move upon these altar service this morning, Jesus. God, that you would sound. Lord, that you would let the anointing power begin to flow in this place this morning. God, that you would let lives begin to get help and get touched, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for what you did at Calvary. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me 